Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here. Welcome back to another video. In this one, we finally have the patch notes for 7.2, which is supposed to be the final update for Battlefield 2042, but I guess we'll see about that. Some uh, stirrings on Twitter from Eddie lead me to believe that may not be the case, but I suppose, like I say, time will tell. So we are going to jump into this. We've, of course, got the new LMG coming. We have the new Stealth Bomber coming as well, which I think is probably going to be the most interesting thing in these patch notes um, so yeah, if you guys enjoy the videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, more on 7.2 to come in the future, as well as the future of Battlefield, whatever it may hold, and uh, yeah guys, thank you as always for the support. Okay, let's jump into it. So, deliver death from above. New gear means new ways to tackle the enemy. This May 14th, you'll be able to work towards unlocking the highly versatile DFR Strife and the XFAD Draugr. Don't worry if you miss out on the time-limited event, as you will still be able to earn them through in-game assignments at a later date. We look forward to seeing you capture and hold objectives in the limited time mode control unlocked as you begin to work your way towards delivering death from above with the X-Fan 4 Draugr on May the 14th. Okay, so you are going to have to play this game mode for 40 ribbons to get the new jet and 80 ribbons if you want to get the new LMG. At least unlocking two items in the game is better than getting some cosmetics though, right? Okay, areas of improvement. Vehicle improvements. We're happy to see that attack helicopters, since our latest changes, have become a force to be reckoned with. They certainly have. With players engaging with them more and more, as well as finding out new ways to use them to their advantage and on the battlefield. We think that they are, for the most part, in a good spot. However, due to the combined firepower of both pilot and gunner, they have been overperforming in one aspect, destroying armoured ground vehicles. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. They are a little bit too powerful in that regard. So we believe as its current state, the attack helicopter can easily destroy any vehicle in too short of a time frame, and we are toning down, toning that down a little by reducing the firepower of some of the more potent weapons versus armored vehicles to address this. We've lowered the, the damage of the tow against heavy armor and medium armored vehicles, which is the tanks, Wildcat and the Ram, and they've also lowered the damage of the anti-vehicle rocket pods to the same category of vehicles by 20%. Wow. That's a pretty big, that's a pretty big nerf though. I mean, I think we all knew that they were somewhat overpowered there. That's not a massive shocker to me, but um, that was one of the funniest thing about the attack helicopters as well. Okay, the APS shoot down Sentinel. We are aware of the long lasting issue of vehicles camping hills, and it has become a bit more exaggerated when Irish APS, Irish's APS shoot down Sentinel is included into this equation. So with update 7.2, we are removing the capabilities for this specialist gadget to shoot down any anti-vehicle weapon or gadgets. This should allow air vehicles and infantry to once again attack such ground vehicles, as well as pushing the gadget itself into a more infantry-focused mentality. So no more camping with the tour tank with Irish. That's a great change. Okay, here comes the big one, McKay. This season in general, we are aiming to slightly slow down the pace of the game and the biggest offenders that can sometimes feel like they are pushing the limits too much. We are starting with McKay by making his gadget more defensive and strategic rather than having it as an aggressive enabler offensively. To do that, we are increasing the cooldown of the grapple from 11 seconds to 25, and we are also lowering the boost of his trait, Nimble, which grants a boost to movement speed whilst ADSing from 40% to 25%. Whoa. That's, that's almost... I mean, that's like a 50% nerf, really, isn't it? Uh, additionally, in a future patch, we will be implementing a force reload animation when equipping the weapon to further emphasize the strategic use of the gadget. So a lot of players are not going to be happy with that. McKay, in my in my eyes, is the best specialist in the game. I, I think he, he's definitely the best assault specialist, probably the best specialist in the game. You know, of course, Falk is pretty good as well. But for me, McKay is just the best. So I'm not surprised they've nerfed him, but that's a pretty insane nerf right there. So continuing with a low effort to uh, slow down the pace of the game, we are increasing the time it takes for the systemic repair system to repair the health of a vehicle. The rate at which this repair is defined by the role and class type of the vehicle in consideration with their gameplay expectations. All vehicles except the Bolt, the Ram, the upcoming Draugr and all ground vehicles repairs will repair 25 HP in 8.7 seconds, sorry, 8.6 seconds, up from 5. So this is going to take way longer now. This change is meant to emphasize the role of engineers and help slow down the pace in these combat moments. 
where before it was possible to nullify taken damage nearly instantaneously by pressing a single button. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's that big of a deal. To me, the rate that it takes to repair, like the length of time it takes to repair, isn't that big of a deal to me. The main good thing about the repair is that it just kicks your repairs into action. Okay, now we're getting into the juicy stuff, guys. The change log. Um, Anti-tank mine damage has received a rebalance. Following recent updates, it will now take three anti-tank mines to fully destroy a heavy vehicle, such as a tank or an MAV. It will still remain possible to destroy medium armored vehicles, such as the Wildcat and the Ram with two. Wow, okay, so how many mines do you get, guys? I, For the record, I never use them, so I, I honestly don't know. But I'm guessing you're going to get three. AK-40 standard issue damage under 10 meters has been changed from 26 to 24. And dispersion and horizontal recoil has been increased by 5%. So a bit of a nerf there to the AM-40. Again, not a big surprise. Definitely one of the best assault rifles in the game. And I'm assuming, I see VHX. I assume it's a nerf. High power ammo damage under 20 meters changed from 25 to 24. So yes, slight nerf to the VHX there as well. LCMG dispersion when using a shortened barrel attachment increased by 10%. Yep, yeah, thought this would be a nerf. This change should help balance both the attachments against other barrel options while also balancing the LCMG compared to other LMGs. So the LCMG, I think it's the best LMG in the game right now. That's, uh, that's fair. So here we've got some visual recoil improvements to a bunch of SMGs, further tweaks and improvements for the following weapons and scope combinations. I won't read all of these, you guys have eyes. So that's good. I'm assuming that they've toned it down. They say tweaks and improvements. I'm assuming that means less visual recoil. Sidearms improvements to visual recoil on heavy uh, sidearms. M44, for example. Hopefully also the Deagle. Okay, vehicles. Adjustment to the damage vehicles take when colliding with other objects. You know, it, it kind of annoys me when they say an adjustment. I wish they'd say an increase or a decrease, so you know what they're doing. Reduce the range of the attack helicopter thermal gunner from 600 meters to 450. Okay, I like the way they just snuck this in there as if it's like, as if it's no big deal. This is a massive deal. Like, this is a really good change. The range on that thing was absolutely absurd, honestly, so. I think this is now much more in line. Now you can't outrange a missile, for example. Uh, improvements made towards lock-on missiles missing certain air vehicles that are locked onto. Okay. Uh, my experience, most of the time, missiles hit you when they shouldn't. So that's interesting. Improvement to the Frogfoot Rocket Pods zero point. That is interesting that they're messing about with a Frogfoot in Portal. Are they maybe looking at bringing these jets back to Battlefield 2042, like to the base game? Who knows? There's always hope, guys. Fix lock-on weapons killing the pilot of a Nightbird and not dealing damage to the vehicle. This has been a bug in the game since the game released. So hopefully they've fixed this now and it's not going to come back again. What was happening is lock-on missiles were attacking the Nightbird. Instead of doing damage to the Nightbird, they were just popping the pilot out of there and one-shotting you. Increased rudder responsiveness on the 2042 era jets, which will lead to a more responsive yaw import. That's great. That's really good. I feel like the yaw was a little bit sluggish. I'm probably going to have to mess around with my sensitivities now, but that's a good change, I think. We'll see how that feels. Okay, here are some of the repair changes that they were talking about at the start of the video. So combat vehicles, aside from the Bolt, the Ram, and the upcoming Drogo, will take 25 HP in 8.6 seconds. Other vehicles will remain at 25 HP for fire. So you get the same amount of HP from the repairs. It just takes slightly longer to fully repair that or to get that 25 HP back. They've increased the HMG weapon station velocity from 600 to 690. Okay, that's not too big of a change. Um, this is the change to the tow missiles that we went over already. So tow launcher damage to main heavy tanks from 30 to 25 and to medium armor, such as the Wildcat from 35 to 30. This is not a blanket change and will not impact other vehicles such as transport or air vehicles. Helicopter anti-vehicle pods will deal 20% less damage and further blast damage reduction to ground armor. So yeah, the vehicle pods there, pretty heavy nerf. Is this it? Is there nothing on the new jet? No. Further tow changes. That makes a lot more sense now. Time to live increase from five to 10 seconds. So that is the reason that when you're trying to hit those far away tow missiles, sometimes they just disappear and it you don't really understand what happened there. Max speed has gone down from 120 to 80. 
Not sure if that's actually a, a buff or a nerf. I guess we'll see how that plays out. Maybe it's going to be a little bit of a buff, actually. Maybe it will be easier to predict, like, and, and aim the tow missile if it's going a bit slower. Turn angles and engine time to live have been adjusted for better control. Okay. And um, for the ground vehicles, time to live has gone up from 10 to 15. I didn't actually realize they had a longer time to live on the ground vehicles than they do in the air vehicles. And speed has gone all the way down from 120 to 50. Turn angles and engine time to live have been adjusted for better control. Okay. So... I mean, that's about it, but some pretty massive nerfs there to McKay, vehicle repairs, and to the attack chopper. I'm a little bit surprised there's just nothing here about the new jet. There's nothing here about the new LMG. I guess we're just going to have to unlock it and see what happens. Like, I was expecting them to tell us here all of the, you know, the loadouts for the new, um, the new Draugr bomber, but apparently that's not the case. We are launching update 7.2 on the 14th of May. So it's literally coming out on Tuesday, guys. Tuesday is bomber day. I am going to be, I'm going to have to play like crazy to try to get that stealth bomb unlocked and hopefully unlock everything for it. And then I'm going to try and bring you guys a video on that because as you guys know, I'm a massive jet guy and I can't wait to see how this thing performs. I don't have big, I don't have high hopes. You know, I think um, it's probably going to be somewhat vulnerable. I think an attack jet or a fighter jet rather on the enemy team is going to shred you as soon as you get in the air. I'm very curious to see how the stealth system works though. Are you going to be completely invisible or will it end up being, you know, one of those systems where after a while, once you get used to looking for it, you can just see a shimmer across the battlefield and you're like, oh, there's a stealth bomber. Let me just go over there and strafe it. I don't know. We will see, but interesting stuff, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. As always, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more Battlefield, and I'll see you guys in the next one.